Welcome to today's broadcast, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making, mountain-moving, giant-killing, demon-stomping, water-walking champion. God is with you. God is for you. God is your defense. You can't go under for going over. God's making a way in the wilderness for little old you, because he set his love upon you. He's ordered his angels to encamp round about you. With favor, God wants to compass you as with a shield. Is that Psalm 5, verse 12? I'm not sure. Okay, I'm Pastor Glenn. It's Thankful Thursday, Thanksgiving Thursday. Every day is the day to give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, His mercy endures forever. Praise God. All right, let me read two scripture cards to you, and then we're going to get in the Word. And I'm not pretending that the scripture cards are not the Word. They are the Word. Job 5, 20 and 22. In famine... God shall redeem you from death and in war from the power of the sword. Hmm. Power of a bomb or AK-47 is what we're going to be seeing in the days ahead. At destruction, because of the open borders, at destruction and famine, you shall laugh. Hmm. You're going to be able to laugh at destruction and famine because you're going to be well provided for as you're filling yourself up with the scriptures on prosperity. That's so important for you. And later I'm going to be teaching you on the scriptures of protection because that's also so important. Proverbs 28, 20 says a faithful man, that's you, faithful woman, shall abound with blessings. I like that. Another card. I'm just reading two cards. Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, the apostle Paul said to guys he believed he would never see again. He thought he was going to jail, was going to maybe be killed, whatever. Now, brethren, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, not the word of the law, not the word of, uh, uh, of behavior modification, but the word of God's grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. When I tell you about the blessing of God, whether it's healing, whether it's prosperity, whether it's peace, whether it's victory, whatever it is, if it's good, it's God, and it's part of your inheritance. God's Word. Not just being a good Christian trying to do the right thing. you got to get in the Word. You got to find promises of God. And then from the book of Isaiah, it says you need to put God in remembrance. Put him in remembrance of what he said. Put your finger on the verse that you need and pray the scripture. Pray the scripture. I'm sick. But Father, I put my finger on the scripture from Isaiah 53 that tells me that Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities, that the chastisement of my peace was upon my Lord Jesus Christ. And by his stripes, I am healed. Isaiah 53 and first uh, and uh, first Peter 224. Right. All right. Now, brethren, I commend you. I turn you over to the word of God, to God and the word of his grace. How do you turn a person over to God? To to the Word, okay? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And then down in like verse 14 of John chapter 1, it says the Word took on flesh. We called him Jesus, the living Word. You can't separate God in in His Word. God only does one thing on planet Earth. Jeremiah 1.12, He watches over His Word to perform His Word. Now that includes millions, maybe billions of things, but it's all stuff in line with His Word. Okay? Now, brethren, I commend you to God in the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up. Hallelujah. The Word's going to build you up, make you strong, and give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. Uh, Matthew 6, 3 and 4. But when you do alms, when you give, let not your left hand know what your right hand does. That's just saying, don't make a show of it. Don't let anybody know what you're doing. That you're giving, your alms may be in secret. Listen to what it says. That your Father, your Heavenly Father that loves you so much, that sees in secret, Himself shall reward you openly. You give in secret, but you get open rewards. People say, how come you always get the blessing? Well, I'm not at liberty to tell you, but I'm standing on different promises of God for prosperity. That's how you say that. You don't say, oh, I'm giving. When nobody's looking, I'm giving to the poor. I'm, I'm providing groceries for the widows. How would it be in your life? 
if you, you, you were at the grocery store and you could tell that the woman behind you, she was wearing a ragged old dress. She had two or three snot-nosed kids with her, maybe even holding a baby. You know she's struggling. How would it be to say, tell the, the, the checker, check out in the checkout line right there at the cashier? That's what I'm trying to say, the cashier. Whatever she's bought, I'm going to wait right here and pay for it. How, how would you feel if you were able to do that? God needs you rightly rich to do some great things. Do you remember years ago when the levees broke in New Orleans, Hurricane Katrina, do you remember that? There was a plea sent out to all the churches, and what they were trying to do was collect clothes for the people who are now homeless. At Pillars of Faith, we sent 300 pair of brand new shoes to help the people that suffered loss at Hurricane Katrina. How is that possible? Because I taught the people how to give, how to receive, and they were able to bless 300 brand new pair of shoes. Not all used shoes with holes in them. Well, that would that would be better than nothing, Pastor Glenn. Yeah, that's fine. But these were brand new. We've done stuff like that so many times. And so I want you to become a giver, but I also want you to become a receiver. There's a lot of people giving to God, and it's not coming back to them, good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over like Jesus said, and the windows of heaven are not being opened to them and pouring out a blessing so much room they don't have room enough to receive it, and the devourer not being rebuked for your sake. So I'm going to be teaching on that uh, every day, of course, and uh, also in July on YouTube. And so go to my channel, please subscribe and please listen to as many as you can. Even if you can't listen, let it run because it's going to add up minutes. And as, when I get to like 4,000 hours, they're going to open a valve that's going to let me reach way more people. All right. Oh man. Okay. We discovered yesterday that through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Wasn't that good? So the knowledge you need to get your deliverance, to get your help, to have the desires of your heart manifested, is you find the scriptures that promise you what you need. God operates on the earth based on what he said in the Bible, okay? So if you don't have knowledge of what God says about healing, it's not likely that you're going to be healed. If you don't know what God said about prospering you, he talks about that more than any other subject in the whole Bible. You scroll down on my app, Pillars of Faith Christian, about eight or nine banners, and listen to a hundred and I'm going to read and quote to you 109 verses and give you the address on prosperity. And as you hear that, you say, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, that's right. I agree with that, Father, in the name of Jesus. Start just using the Word of God in prayer and see that your prayer life is going to improve, improve, improve. If you're sick, you gotta, you got to pray. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, you told me that Jesus would be wounded for my transgressions. He would be bruised for my iniquities and that by the stripes laid on my Jesus, I am healed. That's how you have to pray. Isaiah 53, 5. You got to say the Lord, Father, I thank you that Jesus is called the great shepherd and the, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And other translations, Father says, I shall not be in want, I shall not lack, and I never come up short. And Father, I've been coming up short a few times, so I'm believing you to manifest Psalm, 90, uh, Psalm 23, verse 1. Amen. And so, wow, the Word of God is going to prove true in your case. In my whole experience, all I want is for the Word of God to prove true for you and for me. But it can't prove true if you're not hiding it in your heart, thinking it in your mind, speaking it with your mouth, using the word of God in prayer, using the word of God in praise. Father, I am so thankful that I'm the head and not the tail. I call on you and you answer me. You show me great and mighty things that I know not. Know not. What am I saying when I do that? I'm saying scriptures. And God is watching over his word, Jeremiah 1.12, to do his word, to perform his word. 
all right? You ha- through knowledge, the, God's going to supply all your need. Through knowledge, you can have faith. Without, without knowledge, you don't have faith. God, your will be done. That's the worst prayer you could ever pray because you know what God's word is. It's available to you in the Bible. So don't say, God, your will will be done. Find out what what God said because that's his will. Now, you might say, God, I'm trying to get a Kia and I'm trying to get a Hyundai and I don't know which one to get. Just impress me. Your will be done. You might say that when you don't know. But because there's no verse that says get the Hyundai or get the Kia. There's, there's no verse that says that. So uh, the, the Bible says he's going to give you the desire of your heart. So eventually you're going to like one more than the other. And that's the one you should get. That's the one God wants for you. Now, I've been kind of comparing the blessings of God in a lot of areas to the grapes that the 12 spies brought back when they went into the promised land and said, it's just like God said. But 10 of them said, but there's giants. And two of them said, let's go in at once and possess the land. So I'm trying to get you to visualize the blessings as the grapes that are yours because you're in the promised land. If, if you can't see it in your mind, you're, you're not going to have it in your future. Your mind is a force that affects other things in your life. That's why Romans 12, 2 tells us to renew our mind to the word of God, right? Your mind is a powerful force. The woman with the issue of blood said to herself, said out loud, if I may but touch the hem of Jesus's clothes, I'm going to be made healed. I'm going to be whole. Uh, Mark 5, 28, I think it is. So she had to visualize. And you know what? It happened in her mind before it happened in her body. She knew she was going to have to elbow people out of the way because there'd be a big crowd. She wasn't going to catch Jesus alone having a coffee in a sidewalk cafe. She knew she was going to have to give somebody a hip check. She knew she was going to have to crawl under some people's legs to get to Jesus. But she saw it in her mind. And when she got there, she pushed, she shoved, she climbed over shoulders. She gave hip checks. She gave elbows. But she got to Jesus. And you know what? She touched the hem of his garment and virtue was zapped out of Jesus because she saw it in her mind. I want you to see yourself eating the grapes of blessing, prosperity, favor, healing, whatever it is you need. Saints, I love you. Go forth and make a great day in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Pastor Glenn. Pastor Glenn's daily podcast is available on Spotify, his Pillars of Faith Christian app, and YouTube. I encourage you to support Pastor Glenn by listening to his podcast daily and watching his Bible teachings on YouTube. By sharing his content and increasing his viewership, we can get the gospel of Jesus Christ to more people across the globe. Let's encourage our friends and family to get inspired by God's Word with Pastor Glenn's teachings.